so I find this canoe on Craigslist. I wasn't even looking for a canoe. It's in pretty good shape except for this big crack on the side. But it's only 40 bucks. I'm going to start out by repairing the big crack first. So I've got all my tools together here. I just use an angle grinder with a cutting wheel and I've got some other cutting or abrasive options as well and different wheels. I also always wear a mask when I'm working with uh, fiberglass. A, a cheap simple mask like this will work fine. Um, fiberglass particles once they get into your lungs never go away. Your body can't, uh, they can't get rid of that glass. So it's really recommended that you wear some kind of mask to filter out the particles that you're going to be creating when you're uh, prepping the area. Now I've used a uh, permanent marker here to kind of map out an area that I'm going to be preparing. Um, just by eyeballing it I can tell there's damage that's carried through uh, where the impact happened. So you, it may be counterintuitive to cause more damage but actually you're getting uh, rid of any of the weaknesses around the crack itself that was caused when the impact happened. I tested this out basically by just pounding around it and there's no real inherent weaknesses that were caused by this. It's just that this gets micro cracks all the way around it when something hits it that hard and I want to get rid of all that. Before I start I want to say too that working with fiberglass is extremely easy. You do not have to be a genius to do this. It's, it's pretty straightforward. There are a couple tricks of the trade to the whole thing and and everybody kind of has their own way to be honest with you. And I'm going to show you one way to do it, but there are other ways to do this same job. The one thing I want to avoid in doing this, I could make this really, really strong. I could make this repair much stronger than the rest of the canoe, but that doesn't do me any good. Actually, then I'm creating a weak spot where the patch is and it, where it buckles up to the rest of the canoe. So I'm going to try to actually, when I do this, it'll be stronger than it was originally but it just won't be one big glob of super hard resin. I want it to flex with the rest of the canoe. Keep that in mind when you're making repairs like this. That wouldn't matter as much if I was doing this on my automobile, let's say on a bumper. But on a canoe you still want to maintain a flex in the material itself. Here, But I wanted to show you this. See how once you start cutting in here you can see there's more damage done from that impact and you may run into that and so the crack is going to get bigger and scarier sometimes while you're repairing. And when I'm done it appears that I have more damage in a bigger hole than what I started with but really I'm getting rid of any of the weakened fiberglass that was around what we could just see on the surface, the uh, crack itself. And so you know I'd rather bite into it more even than I have to just to get rid of any weaknesses and then go back and repair it. So in the end again it may seem worse than when you started but that's the correct way to do it. Get rid of any of that weakness. Now I flipped the canoe over which is nice because I can get to the other side of the hull in a canoe pretty easy. And I'm going to rough up you know the area around on the inside as well because this is actually where I'll start the repair on the inside. On boats you can't always do that because boats, boats are usually double hulled and you can't get to the other side. On a canoe like this that's what makes it so easy that you can get to both sides. I'm going to make this a nice smooth cloth repair on the inside and that's going to be my base for laying the repair from the outside. The easiest way I have found to make a pattern on anything, metal, wood, fiberglass, is just take a piece of uh, transparent plastic and trace out the pattern from the outside. And you can cut that out and use it for the patterns of fiberglass or wood or whatever you're doing. Working with fiberglass resin is pretty easy. Just put what you need in a cup and put the appropriate amount of drops in with it. Now when it comes to stuff like this, I am notoriously bad for uh, more is always better, but in this case it is not. Uh, too much hardener will actually weaken the resin, so just put in what it's recommended. Also when you're mixing, don't stir to add bubbles. Just stir to mix. It's another little trick. Gosh, I love the smell of this stuff, man. This brings back a lot of memories. I took like advanced fiberglass resin shop class in high school. I start out with a really thin fiberglass mat and when that hardens up it'll be the perfect platform to put on a thick cloth. When you're putting this on try not to wipe as much as you're blotting. You just want to saturate the fiberglass. 
a lot of people will soak the mat first and then put it on, but I think that's, I don't know. I don't like to do that. It just makes a mess, really. You end up with too much resin. So I'm a blotter, not a soaker. Not sure if that sounds right. And working with resins, you don't have to wait 24 hours for it to uh, completely cure. I mean, this has been 15 minutes and I'm ready to go to work already. So I've cut out a piece of fiberglass cloth. And this will be my final layer on the inside. The material itself is so easy to spread out. If there's a curve or if there's a bump, you know, you can just kind of stretch it out into that area. It smooths out real nice. And again, the best way to put it on is just blotting it in to saturate it. There's really no strength that you can count on in the resin itself. The strength is in the fiberglass. The resin just makes it stiff. Some guys will use masking tape to mask off the area they're working on so they don't go outside, you know, too far outside the line of uh, the fiberglass mat itself. But I really don't care about that in this uh, application. I will grind all that smooth and then paint over it. You want to make sure there's no air pockets in between the layers. So now I flipped it back over and I've got a nice clean flat surface to work with. So with another piece of cloth I laid up another layer Again, just looking for air bubbles and blotting it in. All right, I cut three more patches out, and uh, although this will add strength and it'll be the fourth layer, which is plenty, this is really just to fill in, so I won't have as much to smooth out in the end. After just a few layers, I've got adequate hull strength in that repair area. The repaired area is actually stronger than the uh, original chop shot uh, lay fiberglass layup that was uh, used in the 70s. So if I wanted to, I could just throw some paint on this and use the canoe as is, but uh, I'm going to work on the aesthetics a little better. I'm going to fill it in with some uh, Kevlar waterproof filler and smooth it out and hopefully you won't even be able to see the damage one. I'm working with two types of bondings, a chemical bonding and a mechanical bonding. And by roughing it up before I uh, put on any filler, uh, it helps with the mechanical bonding process. It'll create little lines and cracks in there and gouges and that'll help the uh, filler dig in. Clean the area with acetone as well. The filler I'm using is from Evercoat and it's actually got uh, Kevlar strands inside of it. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Just like the resin, you mix the appropriate amount of hardener in it. You got about uh, four or five minutes to work with it and uh, it sets up in about an hour. We'll make this boo-boo look a lot better. After about an hour of cure time, I'll start sanding it down. Finish up with a skim coat. A little more sanding. Now we're ready to put paint on. I'll actually go the extra step of filling in any scratches or gouges or dents any damage at all just to give it a nice smooth new look. You could use regular auto body or bondo filler to do this kind of work as well especially on a canoe. Uh, I use marine grade uh, putty because that's just the way I am. You know I want to take that extra step but it is more expensive. Uh, marine grade putty has the, of course the fiberglass and Kevlar strands in it. Uh, it's also totally waterproof and it has a lot more UV protection.
marine grade bondo uh, could be used on a boat that's going to be left in the water all the time. With a canoe, you don't have to worry about that. You're taking the canoe out for a, you know, a relatively short time and then taking it out of the water all the time. Most canoes don't sit in the water.